Hello friend and hello friends. I am feeling terribly unwell and not very great overall, but it is time to go try and fight Knight Altorius again. We got somewhat destroyed the last time. Well, no, I nearly beat him a couple times. But um, one of the one of the better boss fights in the game. It breaks out of the Dark Souls mold of having someone ten times your size um, run around and having to constantly stab them in the ankles until they eventually die of ankle exsanguination. So, probably not going to be a lot of talking from me early on because I'll be focusing on the fight. Hopefully I will beat him relatively quickly. <clears throat> but yeah, there'll probably be a lot of coughing as well because I'm not well today. It's always disheartening to get some kind of horrible flare-up after you've been feeling okay for a few days, but such is life. Baby, don't hurt me. I should probably try with the old green herb. If I have, there we go. For, you know, green herb reasons. So, my main tactic for this fight is basically going to be to fight until he's on about 50% health via proper sword fighting and then blast the rest of his health away as fast as possible with my incredibly powerful wizard magics. Um, I might switch to a different hat. The stamina regen is very useful. On the other hand, the crown of dusk will significant incre significantly increase my magic damage um, and the magic damage I receive, which should let me cause him some more problems. This might be an, an entire evening of me trying to do this. Mind you, if this is the first boss I get stuck on as I've been playing through on stream, I think that that's probably okay. I think that my credentials as a uh, Dark Souls are still perfectly sound. killing all these people how did how did you die here reveal your secrets there's nice ambience in Ulusil which actually I guess Ulusil is the town and this is the royal wood but there's nice ambience here anyway aside from the gardeners that try to murder you but I mean you know, if you've ever been to a stately home in the UK, you know what that's like. It's a fun little reference for anyone who, like me, grew up visiting National Trust properties for history reasons, because they were a huge nerd. The past participle is the real, is the real joke in that sentence. Some nice elevator music for this. The elevator noise weirdly reminds me of the elevators in Halo, which also levitates like uh, without excuse or reason. All right, here we go again. This time I remembered to eat my delicious green herbs.
The hitbox on that jump attack is really nasty. Of course, the downside of doing one of the more tense and thrilling fights in the game... Hi Lisa, welcome to the stream. Um, you've successfully failed to see me uh, die three times already. I'm not doing as well as I did last time, unfortunately. Probably because I played for like an hour before we reached the boss fight. Uh, or possibly, as I was about to say, it's down to tension. One thing I've noticed is that in a tense, thrilling boss fight, uh, I become increase unsurprisingly, I become increasingly tense over the course of the fight. If I'm tense, my reactions are slower and I make worse mistakes. And uh, unfortunately, I am tense due to illness today. Still, um, the real trick is to be patient and not get greedy. Very often, if you think you have a window to heal yourself, you actually don't. And uh, the animations are long enough that he'll hit you after you heal, which will usually wipe out roughly how much healing you did. So it's better to just avoid until you get the longer animations that you know you can heal through, like the spear thrust that killed me, um, which I unfortunately just mistimed my dodge on. Also, because I'm having a horrible flare-up and I'm ill, I'm going to be coughing a lot. I've already mentioned that, so I don't need to say it again. Alright, let's see how we do this time. Balls, I forgot to heal before I came in here. That double spin is really nasty. Uh, because if you block it with the shield, the first one is usually enough to break your poise, which means the second spin hits you. And if you dodge, anything more than like the split second before the first hit strikes you, you don't have enough iframes. And in fact, you might never have enough iframes to also dodge the second, um, the second spin. Spin to win. Artorias is playing a different game. These two guys, they're the real boss of this zone. When you master getting past them without taking a hit, that's when you know you're doing good. He doesn't have magic resistance, but um, the second half of the fight, he has a, a he doesn't have a completely different phase, but he does uh, get faster and more aggressive, which is harder to fight against with sword and shield. So my current plan is to um, get him down to about 50% health with melee, and then switch to magic to kill him faster in the more dangerous phase, because I, I can output enough magic to knock him down half of his health, probably, just with the soul spears. And it's obviously also easier and safer to keep my distance during that phase, so... Um, it's just going to be a better... Oh, I should have done that afterwards. Just going to be a better option than... Uh, because I think mist walls make these things disappear. Yeah. Give me a nice yell so I can heal up. 
That's not a nice yell. Not a yell, but it'll do. risky. That was also risky. Nearly time to switch to magic. And that's how it's done. If you're just patient, you don't get uh, aggressive, you uh, wait for the right moments to heal. I think one of my major problems in this fight is that I tend to um, overzealously heal. Um, but if you have the dodge timings down, it's not that difficult to make sure you dodge all of his major attacks, which means that you then can identify the right times to actually heal. Um, because, of course, if you heal and he hits you while you're stuck in the healing animation for more damage than you healed, that's just bad for you. <laughs> um, well, I haven't really needed to go into focus mode for um, any of the bosses up until this point. I can basically play this game on, uh, on autopilot at this stage. But, um, oh, I need the key for this. Okay. But uh, yeah, Artorius is, is thrilling enough of an opponent that he deserves focus and uh, will punish lack of it. <sighs> My hands are sweaty from the fight. 
and other gross facts about me. Anyway, so we'll find the key and come back up here later on. That will let us fight the bonus boss of this area. Well, I mean, we can go fight him anyway, but it's a lot more difficult if we don't uh, go talk to the guy in this tower. But yeah, so one of the things that really interests me about Artorias' boss design is how much more bestial he is. When you consider the elegance of Ornstein, the other knight of... Um, the other knight of Gwyn that we can fight in the game... This, uh, actually, I'll talk about that more in a minute. This is this is the gazebo, which very, very, very few players use. Um, this was introduced to have a more traditional multiplayer system in the game, so that there's, like, one-on-one uh, -on -one duels in a specific dueling arena, and there's also, um, like, multiplayer deathmatch modes that are available from here. You can access the different... So there's team fights, there's dueling, there's... Uh, and de deathmatch, yeah. Which... This over here is the uh, the record, the, the leaderboard for the, the best players in the game at this particular mode. So as you can see, LIS3K has uh, a 12 win win streak currently. <laughs> and is the best the best 50, level 50 and below duelist in the game, I guess. Or at least in this version of the game, I don't know if it has crossplay for, for different um, instances of the game. Battle of Stoicism Gazebo is what it's called, which is probably due to sort of weird, awkward translation. It is... I don't think it is the battleism of the gazebo named Stoicism. I think it is the gazebo in which the Battle of Stoicism happens. So from this point, we have one large area left to go through and then a smaller area and then, then it's the final boss of this zone. Let's grab a bit more... God, we've got so much dexterity. I'm always tempted to put more points in intelligence. I'm not sure if you start getting diminishing returns on it eventually. Vitality and endurance are always nice, but I don't want to make them be odd numbers at this stage, and we won't need more than this for the rest of the game. Alternatively, I could start putting a few more points into attunement to get another spell slot, but that will take four or five more level ups. And as you can see, a, a boss is only getting us one level up at this stage of the game, so I'm just going to whack it in dexterity again. I'm going to become human here because we're going to get invaded by uh, NPC Phantom, but also possibly by players, because this is actually one of the PvP hotspots in the game. There's, uh, I think, four or five um, hotspots that are still very active. Maybe just two or three, actually. And this is one of them. Players who want a solid... Wait, hang on, did I not? I used, to know, I used only a normal one, I guess. Um, but players who, who want to meet other players for thrilling combat can do so in this area. You can do it anywhere, but this is where they like to gather. Which is kind of curious, because the DLC is what introduced the way to have an actual like matchmaking system and um, a deathmatch system and a dueling system in the Battle of Stoicism Casio. But players actually like to come over here and invade one another in this area. The actual PvP spot hotspot is out here. <laughs> it's just kind of funny to me. So in this area we start getting these pumpkin-headed looking guys. These are the former inhabitants of Ulusil who have been uh, corrupted by the malign influence of the void and of dark energy. The ghosts of Anor Londo mostly looked like ghosts of humans, whereas these guys are very, very notably inhuman in form. Which is another one of these interesting little inconsistencies and discrepancies between the way the void is presented in Londo and how it is here. These guys like jumping attacks, so they're really easy to bait off of edges, but <laughs> sometimes you can just slap them around and it's fine. They can actually be pretty tough, but the main the main threat with these guys is their spellcasters, who are usually lurking around corners and use dark sorceries. Which are sorceries that, as you may have guessed, based on the name, do dark damage instead of magic damage. I think they do split between the two, actually. This is a shortcut we'll come back to later. Um, but the interesting thing about dark versions of things is that they have a physical impact. So dark sorceries have, like, physical knockback in a way that normal sorceries don't. <laughs> Bye. Um, and, uh, especially dark, um, dark pyromancies have, have, have very strong knockbacks. I feel like I'm missing something around here. Actually, one thing I want to do is change which spells I have equipped. I'm going to drop one of my soul arrows for 
the Ulusil Light Sorcery, because there are a new type of invisible, uh, destructible walls, uh, illusory walls, that's the term, in this area, which are only accessible by shining light on them. I can't be bothered to switch my items around, so, uh, you know, having to do that while also fighting guys is a pain in the ass, so let's... Where even? There it is. Let's grab Cast Light, which only... Giant Dad! The legend who never dies! He's here! It's really him! Wow. I can't believe people are still using that build. Um, I've mentioned this a few times over the course of these this series of streams. Um, but Giant Dad, the legend who never dies, is was kind of like one of the first really big uh, metagame builds for PvP in Dark Souls. Um, in short, by wearing the Mask of the Father, Havel's Ring, and using very specific loadout of um, parts of the giant armor set, you could... Um, essentially get mac like very nearly maximized armor values while also ha still having the fast roll uh, rather than the slow roll you get when you're wearing too heavy armor. So because you're wearing the Mask of the Father and the Armor of Giants, uh, it became known as Giant Dad. Um, and the other thing is that it lets you wield a, wield a two-handed weapon while doing that. Usually the Zweihander, I think, because the weight fits exactly. Um, and for a very long time, it was the just like the the meta PvP build. It was the kind of the the cheesy PvP build that people would would pick to pick on players with. Down you go. Join your friend. And incidentally, those screams you can hear in the distance are Dusk of Ulasil, whose job it is for us. Whose job? We don't have anyone's job. Uh, who we are here to rescue. Actually, no, someone did ask us to do that. Elizabeth asked us to do that. <laughs> oh, that's a good story. That's that's a very giant dad story to have. But yeah, um, you, you basically never see giant dad anymore because I believe uh, some things were changed in patches to make it less, less dominating. Um, or possibly just the meta moved on and people started... Uh, explicitly countering Giant Dad, although the reason why Giant Dad was so powerful was because it was quite hard to counter someone who can dodge at full speed and have very high armor values. Bloated Head, head of an Ulusil resident whose humanity went wild after being devoured by the Dark of Manus, father of the Abyss. The bloated head is fissured, the cracks lined with innumerable tiny red eyeballs, with a hard outside and a mucus-filled inside no insane person would ever wear it. Which feels like a dare, really. Um, I'm not going to be putting it on because I care too much about looking good. I mean... That's just stylish. There is also... Well, there's plenty more stuff to say about uh, dark and humanity and void and how these things are interrelated. Um, I wish I could remember where the... There's definitely a couple secret doors around here. And you don't need to do anything on them, so long as the so long as the light touches them, the AOE of your of your light touches them, then it will be revealed. But um, yeah, these guys are supposedly corrupted because their humanity went wild, and humanity is kind of a, you know, a conceptual power, a kind of a existential concept in in this world, in much the same way that oh, can I blast that from here? Nope, the roof is in the way. Oh well. Um, in much the same way that what do you call it? Um, you know, souls are really silver pendant. This is incredibly useful against the uh, boss of this area if you happen to be fighting him in melee, which we <laughs> which we won't be. D did you push me? Did you shove me? That's not really acceptable behaviour for a wizard. Not even one with a weird squiggly staff. Can't believe he shoved me. That's more like it. Oh shit, there's two of them. I'm gonna die. <laughs> oh, these guys are gonna kill me. Yep. One thing about this area is that this is one of the only times in the game you encounter opened treasure chests. 
That's entirely on me. I just forgot that there's two of them there. This is one of those um, learn to be cautious or die Dark Souls rooms. But yeah, so humanity is an interesting concept. I believe it's revealed in Dark Souls 3 that humanity is actually tiny, tiny shards of the Dark Soul. The, you know, fourth of the divine souls taken by the four divine figures at the start of, of uh, the Age of Fire. Ouch. And um, unlike Gwyn, who retained his own power but perhaps used it to make his bloodline become a divine bloodline and become various gods of various different spheres of the world, or um, the Witch of Isoleth, who we don't really know about anything about what she did with it, because, um, well, she tried to recreate the first flame and fucked up. Nito seems happy just to be in charge of dead things, so that's his whole deal, but the furtive pygmy supposedly broke his um, lord soul into infinite number of pieces and dispersed them throughout the world, uh, and the, the nature of the, the power that is humanity is that it is a tiny, tiny piece of... That uh, primordial lord soul. So people want to. People often think that um, Manus, father of the abyss, the boss of this area, is the furtive pygmy. I personally don't agree with that. I think there's a lot of reasons why he might not be the furtive pygmy. For one thing, his name is Manus. Um, for another, um, he's very large. <laughs> Uh, I personally suspect that Manus, like my personal, well, I say suspect, my personal belief, because really it all comes down to belief, because this this game's story is about finding your own interpretation, is that um, Manus is perhaps the first human. I think if humanity are the children of the furtive pygmy, I think that Manus is the first and oldest of them, because he is called the primordial human. He's not the father of humanity, he is the primordial human. Or possibly just a primordial human, I forget the terminology. Also, these guys have surprisingly small hitboxes for their giant heads, which is irritating when you're trying to shoot them in said giant pumpkin faces. But, um... So, yeah, um... Given that, I personally... My, my personal interpretation of the reason why the void in this place is so different to the void as we see it elsewhere is simply that, um, well, uh, in, uh, in New Londo they're referred to as having used the power of the void and in some way opened a hole into the void. I think that the void we go to here is not the true void. It is, you know, it is the human world after having been, you know, corru corrupted. I hate the way these guys laugh. Um, you know, corrupted by the void. Don't like this. I'm just going to soul spear these guys because otherwise they might kill me. Now it is time for the duel only we two can fight. The astonishing spectacle of wizard battle. So I don't know what was in these chests. I'm not sure if there's a if they're just like that forever or if they change based on on game situations. Damn, really? Could have fooled me. I vaguely is hang on, is there a is there a secret thing here that's revealed by if you have the the light sorcery? I'm gonna call that a big fat no. What about a secret invisible path? We've seen those before. Where is my moonstones? Do oh, do I not have any? Did I put them all in my box for some reason? That's a mistake. Well, okay. <laughs> I'm not diving off there to find out. Now, there's definitely a way up somewhere to get up a bit higher. Oh, hi. Give me a wallet. <laughs> oh, 
Ah, of course, the I'm sorry carving. So in this area, you can find various carvings. Um, a character creates these, and they are the only way to directly communicate with another uh, human player using words. So whenever you whenever you drop one of these on the ground, I'm sorry. it uh, creates an echo, which sounds remarkably like English words. Or uh, presumably Japanese words if you play in Japanese, or whatever other language you, you play in. There's, I think, six of these in the game. Um, hello, goodbye, I'm sorry, over here, and something else. And um, if you find all of them, you can have some fairly entertaining conversations with other players. But the main, the main use of them is to draw people's attention in PvP. Um, or to quickly communicate with other players when you don't want to have to go through the emote menu and then sort of mime at them fruitlessly for a while. So, uh, this goes up. Is this how we get around to the, the thing? Yep, it is. There's a thing over here. Love to, I love things. Things are my favourite thing. I just... I cannot get enough of things. I like to I like to gather them all up and store them for the winter. Anyway, um... Oh, I have to go all the way back around now. Whoops. I think I can jump onto this roof. Would have been amazing if I was wrong, huh? But yeah, so, um, I think that the reason why, um, that's a trap, that's obvious, oh, that, this is definitely a trap, that's a, that's super duper a trap. Remember how tough these things used to be? Not me, that's for sure. Very good. Very good, that's the other one. I really I really like very good. Well, that was not very good, but whatever. I also love the screams and grumbles of the uh, monsters around here. They're kind of like blah, blah, blah. <laughs> noises that they make. Alright, I think I've got everything in this area. I think I've missed I think I've missed an illusory wall somewhere, but I can't be bothered to go find it right now. Um so, yes, I think that they, uh, in, um, in New Londo, they, they had some kind of interaction or pact with the, with the abyss and in some way made a hole into the abyss itself, which is why you go down there and then you're like, oh, hey, this is absolutely the abyss. What's up with that? Um, you know, the humans there clearly aren't mutated the way these guys are, but it was also clearly a long-term thing. It's not like they did... It's not like one guy was like, hey, hey, guys, watch this, and made a hole into the abyss, and then everybody was like, oh, shit. Um, which is kind of what's happened here, actually. <laughs> um, this apparently was not a slow downfall the way that uh, New Londo was. So I think that um, it's specifically a specific person. One person's humanity went wild, and instead of making letting us go to the abyss, has brought the abyss to us. That's what's happened here, which is why this weird blue shit is leaking around and, and gooshing up the place. Um, so I think one person's humanity went wild and expanded out and started to turn this into the abyss rather than let us go there. And then, uh, Jesus, how many of you guys are there? There's about six of them down here, so I'm being a bit wary. I don't want them to murder me. Which the sorcerers absolutely will if I'm not careful. Let's see if I can get this one in the head. Eat that. You know, with all those eyes, you'd think you'd see what was coming, but uh, nope. Apparently, I'm out of this guy's aggro radius. <laughs> I'm kind of surprised. Oh, no. There he is. He's got me now. Alright, come along. I actually do. Um, I'm kind of... Uh, I, d I don't want to stream the same kind of game back to back, so I'm not going to be playing uh, a Souls like right after this, but I do have vague plans. I will eventually be streaming Dark Souls 2, but uh, before then I've also thought about Sekiro, uh, which I don't actually consider to be a Souls like. It's, it's from Soft taking 
a particular and interesting formula they have and applying it to a different genre and kind of setting. But um, aside from, from from Soft entirely, I've also been thinking about playing Mortal Shell. As I understand, it is one of the few Souls likes that are actually very close to the original Souls formula. Um, and I'd quite like to give it a go. But also, there is the advantage that I have never played it before. So you would all get to see what it's like when I play a Souls game for the first time rather than, you know, the 30th time. Which sort of can be done with uh, Dark Souls 2 since I've only played that once before, but I still remember the zones and stuff well enough to have an idea of how to progress through it. And of course, it's still um, specifically Dark Souls mechanics. But I'm also always happy to, to hear for recommendations for Souls-like games. I've heard that Nio is quite good, but I haven't played that either. So, can't speak to whether it actually is good or not. Currently, the poll as on my Twitter as to as to which game I should stream next is is heavily in favour of the original Half Life. So, that's probably what I'll be doing next as the main stream. But I'm definitely doing a week of random variety streaming in between just to palate cleanse a little bit. But after that, it's anyone's game. No idea what I'll what I'll go to next. I might just go straight back into a Souls, because why not? <laughs> but it could be any number of things. I think that that thumping noise is supposed to clue us in that there's a hole in the wall here. I don't remember what's on the other side of it. There's nothing in here? Ah, well, as I said, Nio is definitely an option. Um, ah, treasure chest. Cannot get enough of treasure chests. Absolute favourite thing in the world. That will drop us down to where we first entered this area, which I did not mean to do. Not the end of the world, though. This super looks like an illusory wall, but isn't. <laughs> As you can see, some people have fallen for mistakes with regards to that. There's a couple of tiny areas that are hard to get to here, but that can be reached through some little bits of shenaniganery. Such as uh, rolling off of the bridge here, which will get us into that little area. So if we run and jump here, and you have to hit the exact height of that, um, otherwise you'll find yourself bouncing off, uh, you know, thwacking your head on the archway and falling down. You have to get right through the middle. Oh, for fuck's sake. Do I have enough hit points? No. <laughs> We're so far through the game and I still don't have the hit points not to get murdered by a mimic. I thought there weren't any more mir mimics in this area and I forgot to look at the chain. I've always found Ulusil Township a bit tedious to get through in my opinion. Uh... Um, I have played half of Black Mesa, I think, when only half of Black Mesa was original uh, was available. I think back when it was still a mod, actually, was when I played uh, Black Mesa. But um, I have a fondness for the original, the original Half Life. Not as much as I have for Half Life Two, which is one of my favourite games of all time, even though I haven't played it in about six years. Um, but I, I have been wanting to to stream or let's play Half Life and Half Life Two at some point. The burden of research on me for streaming Half-Life 2 is going to be absolute, would just be absolutely massive because Half-Life 2 is one of the most documented uh, games design histories in, in history. Uh, I, so I would feel that in order to do my due diligence I'd have to read tons of interviews, um, I'd have to get a hold of the multiple books Valve uh, staff have written about the development process of Half-Life 2. Uh, it's just going to be a lot more work than like I do a ton of research on my let's plays, but I don't normally have such a, have such a like, high requirement, and it won't be as obvious usually if I do skip over some things. Um, 
which is why there'll be streams instead of Let's Plays, because as I say semi-regularly, my YouTube Let's Plays are where you find the in-depth, well-researched, carefully planned live critical analyses of, of games as art, and streaming is um, where you come to watch me get bitch slapped to death by a pumpkin! Um, so I like, I do try, I do try and do the, um, do the thing that I do in my Let's Plays while I'm streaming, but I, I don't have the same pressure. I don't feel a need to research and plan a stream the way I do episodes of my Let's Plays. I can just dive in and talk shit about whatever the fuck Manus's deal is. This bridge is actually really difficult, because there's two of these guys, but that sorceress will start blasting quite early. Return of focus mode for a split second there while I got the dodge timing right. <laughs> uh, the vote is still ongoing. Um, I set it to seven days because I'll be doing the variety streams all, all next week and dipping in and out of different games. So there is definitely going to be uh, time still to vote if anyone hasn't yet. And uh, in the YouTube upload of this, I'll stick a link in the description as well. But um, I think last time I checked, there were 13 votes cast, and it was it was Half-Life uh, with strong lead, leading by like a third, I think, over the next competitor. This guy gets surprised every time. You'd think he'd learn. Oh, where the fuck did you come from? I forgot there's two or three that dropped down from above, aren't there? Ah, oh, well. It's as bad for them as it is for me. Probably worse, considering I kill them. Probably. You know, the inconvenience of these guys attacking me is- Oh shit, my weapon's gonna break. Uh, I c Do you know, it takes so long for your weapons to take attrition in this game that I straight up just tend to forget uh, that they can take damage over time. Fortunately, we're a wizard, so we can just kill people with spells, but... <laughs> Uh, probably a good idea to be careful about that. If your weapon breaks in Dark Souls, you can repair it at a bonfire. You can also repair it before it breaks, which is generally the advisable option, but... Well, see, I have no repair powder because this is going to be the first time I have ever actually needed to repair a weapon in this, in this run-through. I have repaired things two or three times just for funsies, but I have literally never actually needed to before, not once. Uh, and I guess I just haven't found any repair powder drops, if indeed any exist within the game. My A lot of my fondness from Half-Life 2 comes from um, just me playing with the physics over and over and over. For hours and hours and hours on the Xbox, because um, I actually got the orange box on Xbox 360 as a as a dumb teenager. I never, it was years before I played it on PC, and I was like, oh wow, this is so much better. Which isn't to say it was bad on Xbox. All right, let's not make the same mistake again. As a wizard, the way that you would refrain from making the same mistake again is to cast spells on things. This is also how wizards tend to end up making the same mistakes again. The crest key. I think that might be what lets us get up in the tower, but I'm not sure. Should be here somewhere. Just gotta... Garbage, garbage, garbage. Trash, trash, trash. Why do I have all this garbage? It's only the, um, you know, fundamental essence of some of the most powerful divine beings in existence. Why do... <laughs> Who cares about this? Yeah, I think that's the one that will let us get up, in, get up in the tower and fight the bonus boss, which we will maybe do today. I oh, really? I've never played uh, Deus Ex on console. I think I saw PS2 copies occasionally, but I've never actually played it. Deus Ex is such a... It's just such a PC game. Ouch. Rude. 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 <laughs> I 
it's this room. It's all this room's fault. Anyway, we'll get the shortcut and then we'll come back up and uh, see if we can unlock the tower and meet Hawkeye Gao and refrain from questioning how the fuck he got into that tower when he's four times the height of the door. Oh shit. Oh shit. Welcome to Dark Souls, the place where, if you get careless, you either defeat everything easily or fall in holes. Or occasionally holes fall on you, or things fall on you out of holes. Anyway, that's uh, nearly one level up down the drain. Oh well. Let's Yes, let's imagine a sad trombone noise. Um, which is a regular feature of my life. <laughs> Not just of my streams. I'm gonna have to switch to Streamlabs so that I can do more fancy things with like audio visuals. Which would let me have some kind of sad trombone noise for when I fuck up something easy. In fact, speaking of sad trombone noises, do you remember how moments ago I was talking about how I needed to repair my weapon at a bonfire and then when I was sent back to a bonfire I just fucking didn't? This is what it's like playing games when you have memory issues. Right, let's try this properly. Repair equipment. Let's just fix everything, I guess. Actually, let's do the armor as well. You never know. I don't even remember wearing some of these. Can't believe I spent all my souls on that. Oh well. Fortunately, I have a pocket full of other people's money. <laughs> Slowly gathered up over the course of the game. I think popping a 10,000 soul to repair equipment that costs 126 and 62 respectively is the equivalent of the the made man walking into the the shop expecting not to have to pay for something and then peeling off a few dirty la money laundered hundred dollar bills off of an enormous roll out of his pocket and dropping them on the floor. And other mafia tropes. I watched um. I watched The Godfather for the first time recently, and suddenly a lot more cultural references make sense. Welcome to Laser Town. Population primarily me. Or at least when I'm done with it, it will be. Let's see if I can get these guys to throw themselves into the abyss again. Apparently not. <laughs> do, 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 do. Oh, fuck. Once again, that curse of carelessness. You think the number of times I've gone around this corner and gotten blindsided by this guy, I'd have learnt where he is by now. I do like their snazzy dresses though, I'd wear that. You know, not the horrible wooden pumpkin head bullshit, but... You know, the rest of it is quite nice if you like tattered... tattered goth apparel, I guess. things I mentioned on the last stream is that um, this whole DLC pack feels kind of odd and out of place. Rather than matching Dark Souls' enigmatic tone, um, where you are told very little and it's basically boiled down to what you can interpret and figure out about what you find in the world, with very little direct information given and so on, and very much this sense of like, we're going to talk about ancient things that happened a very, very long time ago, and maybe you will eventually find one of them, and it will be kind of mind-blowing when you discover that actually, yeah, the, the gods are real, or actually, yeah, those ancient heroes did once walk the Earth. Whereas, coming back 300 years and finding that they're still alive is weird. Um, but that's not why I brought it up. What I was going to say was something else related to that point. Unfortunately, I have fallen foul of my usual tangent mistake, started talking about something else in the middle of talking about whatever I was talking about, and completely fucking forgotten. 
But um, it is it is deeply weird to... Oh, I remember what it is. It's that um, supposedly this is 300 years ago. This is pretty solidly built stone structures, but yet when we are back in the modern day and watching this area, there's just nothing here. Um, additionally, the two ruined stone towers are still as exactly ruined um, now in 300 years in the past as they are now 300 years in the future in the main game. Um, it's just weird. Uh, there's a lot of like little aspects like that that people don't seem to have thought about. And if you'll excuse me for 30 seconds, I just need to have one of my semi-regular post-COVID uh, coughing fits. And we should be back. Do let me know if you cannot hear me, except that that doesn't make sense because you won't be able to hear me asking you to tell me if I can't hear you. Um, well, everything says it's fine on my end, so let's assume it's fine and this time not die horribly. Oh, I suppose if I ask people to let me know if they can't hear me and then they don't respond, that does mean that they can't hear me. So actually, this, this isn't completely empirically sound after all. On the other hand, um, you do actually live in the same flat as me, so it's possible you can just hear me through the wall, I might be that loud. Additionally, um, if anyone watching does not know, I do in-depth, carefully structured and well-researched Let's Plays on YouTube. You can uh, check out the links on my Twitch page, if such a thing is a thing, uh, in order to find those. Do check them out, I think they're really good, maybe you'll like them. And I stream three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 7pm UK time. So, uh, drop me a follow if you if you like this and want more of it. Or you meant to and forgot to. Or even, you know, if you hate my stuff, fuck it, follow me anyway. Anyway, my, my mandatory one attempt to self-shill per stream has now passed. So let's get back to stabbing guys. So the real th issue here is that I, for some reason, am obsessed with fighting this guy. Why? I don't know. There's nothing for me to get up here anymore. But, you know, he wronged me, so he must die. First he wronged me, now so long me. That doesn't make sense. Anyway, um, back to what I'm doing. At the very end of this little building subzone, there is a nice shortcut that we'll be opening up. Another one of these mysterious lifts. Oh, I remember what I was talking about. I was talking about the, dis the stonework disparity, which would be a really good name for a science fiction novel. Um, you know, one of those like classical science fiction novels where the, the science of sci-fi is quite low key and it's about something weird that doesn't quite make sense and people trying to understand it. Like we know, we know from historical record that this ruin must be a thousand years old and yet the stonework's only 500 years old. And then you get this interesting social mystery spanning out, etc., etc. These things exist. They must do, right? Anyway. I love that spell so much. Anyway, yeah, so the stonework. Basically, all of these ruins should still be around in the modern day, but aren't. Um, which is kind of dumb. Additionally, uh, the mistake of having your ancient primordial legendary heroes from incalculable eons past be running around 300 years ago is just, again, this weird, weird mistake of scale. I mean, for the phrase fantasy writers have no sense of scale is itself a cliche, with things either being way, 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 way too separate in time or way too close in time, but um, I don't really know what's up with it here. I suppose one, one might argue that, um, you know, 
the reason why none of these ruins are here in the modern day is because they all sank into the, the, the abyss and were lost. But if that's the case, um, like, why would that happen when what we do here is stop the abyss spreading? After all, if you defeat the boss of this area and uh, move on and go back to your own time in the future, these ruins do not suddenly appear. So presumably you do successfully prevent this terrible stuff from happening, but you, but you don't prevent it from just also disappearing. Um, it's very easy to say, you know, like, oh, there's timey-wimey bullshit in Dark Souls, everything's all a bit fucked up, and like, yeah, that completely explains everything and that's fine. <laughs> However, it does also... You know, it's designed to be interpreted, and I just think that the tonal difference between the very carefully, carefully ambiguous and mysterious and deeply enigmatic tone of the base game, as compared to the kind of, like, I'm just going to tell you what's happening. And also, you know those guys you've had tiny shreds of information about? Would you like to meet them? Why don't you fight one of them and then talk to another one? You. Is that not the soul of the man who fell on this spot? He was a dear friend. I wish to pay proper respect with that soul. Would you be willing to part with it? Well, geez, sure, why not? Thank you. You are very kind. Please take this. I no longer need it. May the Lord guide thee. So if you keep that soul for yourself, you can pop it for, for plenty of souls like any other boss soul, or you can use it to create Artorias' great sword, or I believe his great shield, both of which are very effective weapons for builds other than that which I'm using. And if you give it to this individual who is a Dark Tracer Kieran, I believe, who is one of the four knights of Anor Londo, the leader of uh, Gwyn's Corps of Assassins, which is apparently a thing he needed to have, so presumably this is a this is a divine entity, or it is at least a human who worked for the divine entities. I love her mask. Her whole design reminds me very heavily of the Eldar designs from what well not the Eldar, the um High Elf designs from the Warhammer Old World, which I've always I've always found really endearingly kind of 90s fantasy or 80s fantasy even. Anyway, now that we have come back up here and been polite to a grieving woman, we can go wake up Hawkeye Gao. Which means that you can actually meet all of the uh, the four knights of, of Anor Londo. Because, of course, you fight Ornstein in the base game. But here we can also fight Artorias, and we can meet Kieran, and we can also murder Kieran if we want to. I think... Uh, I think... If you kill her, she might drop a Firekeeper soul. I'm not sure. But um, I'm not really in the mood to just murder her for no reason. On the other hand, on these streams, I've been being much more vicious than I usually am when I play Dark Souls and killing lots of NPCs that I don't need to. So, low-key, I'm kind of tempted to go murder Kieran. And here we meet the fourth of the Knights of Gwyn, leader of the Great Archers. Because the four Knights of Gwyn are the leaders of four different groups that work for Gwyn. Um, Ornstein led the Dragon Hunters, I believe. Gao led the Great Archers. Kieran led the Dark Tracers. And Artorius, the leader of all four, was his great general and in charge of the Legions of Silver Knights. But, bro, how did you get here? How Look at the size of this hole and look at the size of this man. Look at the size of this man's hole. Just look at it. Uh, yeah, so... This guy is, in fact, where these have been coming from. He's quite an interesting character. I really like him. Um, it would also bother me less to meet him than the others. There's something about a, an ancient giant who just sits carving forever in this sort of vaguely Buddhist atonement sort of way um, that feels more appropriate to be something you meet lost out of ancient legend, unlike the four knights who are just running around doing knight things, the other ones, I mean. I believe that if we'd use this, he'll notice. Very good. Or perhaps I was wrong. Mm. A visitor, have we? Thou must be the one who freed Artorias. An old friend he was. Thanks to thee, he left this world with honor intact. And here I am. The time... Blind, but 
little help to me, I'm afraid. Dragons shall never be forgotten. We knights fought valiantly, but for every one of them, we lost three score of our own. Exhilaration, pride, hatred, rage. The dragons teased out our dearest emotions. I will understand one day. At that twilight, old thoughts return in great waves of nostalgia. So the reason why he sounds like the very good guy is because that's what he's carving. Those things over there, the thing in his hands, that's one of the, the markers that I, that I throw down on the ground. Presumably the ones in the township below were stolen from him by... Or possibly he just gave them away to Ulusil villagers before this disaster took place. But um, in their item descriptions, or somewhere, it says that he pours his emotions into each of these carvings as he carves it. Which is why they each look like a face that expresses the emotion that it conveys when you drop it. And then when you throw it at the ground, it echoes and says the phrase associated with whatever emotion it was. Mm. Very little to be said. What good is a dog with no hands to hunt? But I'm lucky to be alive, I suppose. So here we have the last of the great archers formed to hunt dragons, the last hunter of dragons remaining. Except, of course, that Ornstein is still in Anor Londo and fine at this stage, since we only kill him 300 years from now. <laughs> so now that we've met him, if we go back and see the dragon again... Oh, here are, the, here are two more of the carvings. Let's pick them up while we're here, nice and cheap. And grab a bunch of these, because why not? Since I've lost my other ones. I don't want those. I kind of do want some of these, actually. I might grab some Titanite shards while I'm here. Just because they're useful to have. As thou seest I can't remember where we find this information, but apparently Gal was blinded. Um, wait, is his name Gal? Hawkeye? He's Hawkeye Gal, right? And then the guy... Is... Oh, I'm thinking of Smo, or Smau, or Smoch, or Smee, the other boss in Anor Londo. Ah, yes, because we got killed by the dragon and we talked to him a second time, he's now offering to help us with said dragon. Dragon indeed, even mighty Anna Londa dared not provoke his ire. I see little good coming from this, but my intent is to persevere to the bitter end. <laughs> good, good. What is bravery without a dash of recklessness? I've taken a liking to thee. And I owe thee much for thy service to Artorius. Now, watch and see how Goth hunts dragons. Oh, he's Goth, okay. Which m implies to me then that uh, Executioner Smau is in fact ex Executioner Smoch. I think if I think if Hawker A. Goth here pronounces it that way, it's reasonable. They're both giants. I don't believe there's any direct connection to him between him and the giant archer in Dark Souls 3. Yes. A true shot was never loose. I think it's more of a trend. I mean, he's not wrong. So, uh, yeah, this uh, grounds Calamite and means that when we fight Calamite, he, he can't go flying around, which makes it a much easier fight for us. 
Um, there's a couple of important caveats to fighting Calamite, all of which I've forgotten, so I don't remember if I should wear magic resistant gear or whether I should maximize my magic damage. Um, ideally, if I could remember which of those tactics were sensible, or the other sensible tactics, all of which I've also forgotten, <laughs> um, I would be an easier time fighting it. Oh well. If I fail to beat him now, I'll um, I'll try again next stream, probably. Maybe finish the rest of this area and then call it a night and look it up in between times. But yeah, Calamite is ostensibly the last of the everlasting dragons. Uh, a big, angry fellow. Now that I think about it, Chester didn't invade when we went through the main town area. Why not? Still alive, are you? Think of anything that you might need. I wonder why. Did you really slay Knight Artorias? I'd heard the Abyss found him first, but even still, that's absolutely treacherous. Yes, magnificently so. <laughs> this guy's the most her. I do love to be so evil long. person in the entire game. He's so cartoonish. Like, he's, he's a cartoon villain. Just sitting there talking to people who walk past going like, oh, I love treachery. Don't you just love backstabbing, darling? Delicious. Anyway, um, we'll come back to Calamite in a mo. Where the fuck am I going? Actually, where the fuck am I going? I've got all my spells. Um, I'm just going to go fight Calamite. I'm not sure why I felt the need to run back to a bonfire, uh, considering the bonfire over here is further away than the bonfire in uh, the upper township. But yeah, so Calamite is supposed to, supposedly the last of the, the primordial dragons. Um, although we know that's not true because the everlasting dragon is, is still down in, in Ash Lake, but it's not unreasonable to argue that Ash Lake is not really a part of the world since it's that sort of primordial subdomain beneath the substrate of the universe. So if Calamite's the last one that really is running around the world, then that makes a bit more sense. Although what he's doing here at this point in time is anyone's guess. Much like Artorias, this might take a few tries. Calamite is supposedly intended to be the hardest boss in Dark Souls 1. Um, a lot of people reckon that um, Manus is harder. Some people reckon the Sanctuary Garden is harder, but I personally think that Calamite is one of the toughest. Unlike Knight Artorias, he's not a thrilling fight against a, a similarly powerful swordsman. He's just a big fucking dragon. But he's also, interestingly, uh, blind, I think. Much like Gok himself. Which means that if you wear the ring that deadens the sound your footprints, your footsteps make, you can actually sneak around him relatively effectively. Or so I am told. Um, because he tracks you by sound. Take that, Crystal Lizard. And indeed I did. So as soon as we finish dropping down here, we'll get attacked. So I'm actually going to, quote, waste, unquote, a humanity here just to top off my health without cutting into my supply of Estus. Which, uh, obviously Estus is renewable and souls aren't, but... But, 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 I can't uh, de be dealing with the longer animation time during an actual fight. Now I think Calamite has a, has the similar recommendation to Artorias of uh, waiting until halfway through the fight before switching to spells if you're a spellcaster. Oh, I definitely remember some advice I forgot. <laughs> the magic resistance shield is definitely what we want to go for. Oh, fire resistance. One of the resistance shields is what we need for blocking his uh, fire attacks. But like a Dark Souls giant boss, he is aggressive and does a shit ton of damage. So I expect to see this happen a few times before I get his dodge timings down again. Yes, well, I suppose I don't really need to fight him, but fighting him is the main way we have of gaining money, and I do have to make both ends color meet. We don't need the light spells anymore, so I'll just switch it out for some kind of 
other sorcery, preferably preferably one that does some kind of damage. I know it's uh, a strange idea, but let's let's try and damage this opponent. Right, Crest Shield will give us magic resistance. Dragon Crest Shield will give us fire resistance. Which of these do we need? I don't know. You'd think it would be fire, but he does have, like, telepathic brain attacks also, so who knows, really. We also don't really need the Chloranthi ring anymore. I think I'll switch to the Flamestone Plate ring for extra fire resistance. And our weight value is 16.7, which is fine, since we can go up to 17, I think. 17 point something. Calamite's name is a fairly obvious uh, pun or reference to Calamity, which I quite like. There is a kind of a tradition of... Like, dragons in folklore aren't natural creatures, they aren't organisms. They are great beasts, they are calamities, they are disasters. Um, and it's a nice little reference back to that tradition. Incidentally, Calamite has a tail cut, like many of the dragon enemies in the game. Except that the item that is dropped when you cut off Calamite's tail is not a weapon. It is, in fact, a ring called the Ring of Calamity, and the only effect that ring has is to make the game a lot harder for you. So if you want um, double hard mode, well I guess Dark Souls is only hard mode, since Dark Souls only has one difficulty level, and that is Dark Souls. Um, but yeah, if you wear that ring, I believe it halves your damage and your hit points. I can't remember the exact details, but it's something like that. Wow, I'm having a hard time fighting this one dog. I'm not, uh, I'm not going to waste humanity, actually. Let's just chug a lug before we go. Squish a bug. One of the difficulties with fighting Calamite is that his AoE attacks have really difficult to judge hitboxes. You can very often be standing in fire and not be hurt by it, but you can also very often not be standing in fire and still be hit by it. Uh, also, his melee hitboxes are huge because he's a dragon. Back to try-hard mode time. Fun fact about that attack, if you don't move and you're standing right in front of him when he does it, you are exactly far enough back that it will miss you when he drops at the other end. If that attack hits you, he lifts you into there, does a bunch of damage and applies a debuff that uh, increases the damage you receive for pretty much the rest of the fight. The only real way to dodge it is to be right in front of him and successfully dodge to the side. I believe also if you hit him in the head enough, you can stagger him and get a, a big damage. Uh, stagger. Stagger repost, or whatever they're called. me this time. What a badly timed heals here. Generally you want to be in front but close so that you can get the advantage of when he does fire attacks. 
being able to uh, dodge around his head. But if you are behind him, this is a mistake because it provokes the tail flailing attacks which are quite hard to dodge and do a lot of damage. So that's roughly where we want to be. When he does fire attacks, it's very often better to stand in place and block. Because with a fire resistance shield, you can usually block uh, enough damage that you're okay. Whereas uh, if you dodge, the iframes are really, really difficult to hit. See me failing to take my own advice, as usual. So we've made a lot of progress on this one. Um, I think that the trick, once again, is going to be not to get greedy. Uh, that's usually the case with tough Dark Souls fights. Um, I was trying to push damage through too much too early. But um, focusing on getting the dodge timings down and um, only, only taking the number of hits that you can get within an animation window is the real trick to fighting bosses like this. So yeah, it's going to be this for a little bit longer at any rate. We should have a much easier time fighting Manus. Last time I fought Manus as a sorcerer, I beat him first try. Um, because he doesn't... Like, but if you're an endgame sorcerer, the damage output you have is just so crazy huge that it's not an issue. Um, and um, not being close to him the way you have to... I fucking hate dogs in this game. The worst dogs in video games. I have this whole thing about how dogs are the worst things to fight in video games across the board. Every game with dogs in that you fight, it's a pain in the ass to fight the dogs. Um, and Dark Souls are not just no exception, but they are exceptionally good examples of that trend. They're so dodgy and their hitboxes are so small. Anyway, I am going to use Humanity again because I want to have all of my Estus available for the fight. Humanity has a stronger heal, but it's a limited resource, and also uh, it has the issue of having a longer animation. Also, with uh, Estus, you can double drink. If you drink again during the drinking animation, uh, you get a shorter second gulp. So it's if you need to heal twice, it's faster to do it twice in quick succession than to have two separate full single animations.
possibly the worst timed heal I've done in this entire game so far. I guess I was wrong about that animation. I might try solely magic this time. See if I can get him that way. I think I'll switch my items a little bit. Go for Bellowing Dragon Crest Ring and Helm of Dusk. Or crown of dusk, rather. This should provide a significant damage boost to my sorceries. Um, as they stack and are both pretty major damage boost jumps. I think I think either of them will raise your damage output by like 50, 100 points or something, depending on what your stats are. I do love to dock us all in the evening. I think that's all of them, right? There's three dogs, I'm not forgetting any. Right then, let's see if we can get him to Calamita's Maker this time. My partner's giving me a very sceptical look across the room. Really? This? This is the pun you disapprove of after all of the puns? Oh, clearly I should have been doing this the entire time. Look how much damage I'm doing. This is insane. Oh, uh, well, I better not get cocky. Which is general good Dark Souls advice. He gets much more dangerous once he's at lower than 50% health, much like Artorias. So I nearly had him then. Clearly going with magic was the, the better idea and I should have just done that from the start. What I think I'll do is use my... Uh, use ordinary soul arrows to start with and then switch to the soul spears after he's taken maybe a third of his hit points. Uh, which should let us kill him fast enough that it's not an issue. But... Yeah, switching switching to my sword and trying to get a few hits in there was, was a mistake. And... Um, but what actually killed me was that I, I 
get, let myself get too close to the wall. When he does that ver vertical flight, you have plenty of time to get out from underneath it, unless you are backing into a wall, at which point it will hit you. Uh, and it can strike multiple times, so that's generally something to avoid, generally speaking. As, as a wizard, generally, you want to avoid getting hit multiple times, just, you know, wizard tips. Um, of course, most other people are perfectly happy getting hit tons of times. Um, as I'm sure you're all aware, because you're all people. <clears throat> God. Uh, yeah, so I, I might just beat Calamite and call it a night. My, my chest's getting pretty sore. As I've said, I'm having a bad flare-up of my post-COVID symptoms. I've been having an awful time lately. Dog, dog, reptile, dog. I think I mentioned this previously, but this is the only place in the game that these lizard dogs appear. This one tiny, tiny microclimate. This remarkably small ecosystem. What do they eat? Who knows? Dragon hunters, presumably. I actually really like their colour scheme. There's something very pleasing about the sleek black skin with the uh, golden speckles. If I fail again, I might have to call a meeting and uh, discuss what to do with the with the advice staff. Greedy. There's actually very few of his animations that are long enough to safely heal during. going with the uh, 
basic spells for a bit longer before I switch to my soul spears. There is a, there is a bit of an RNG element to this battle as well because you kind of need to rely on being given opportunities to heal, which uh, the AI does not always allow. Um, if you if you get faced with several almost impossible to dodge attacks and uh, no windows to heal, you either have to take a risk on healing or, or just die of attrition, really. Which nobody likes. Much like these goddamn dogs! Boss time, boss time, time to fight a boss. Will I beat the big guy? Or will it be a loss? Boss time, boss time, time to beat a boss. Soon this enemy will be gone. Or maybe it'll drag on. That's terrible. The amount of damage I have taken is directly proportional to how bad that song was. Meat punishes fight puns. You heard it here first, folks. <laughs> Wowzers. Okay. Right. Um, I got destroyed that time. Which means I might be approaching a tilt, in which case I will give it one more try, and uh, if I do terribly, I'm going to call it a knight. Even though it's a dragon, and as you know, knights are very oppositional to dragons, as uh, as, uh, as as Goch was pointing out to us. It'd be really funny if I remembered when I finally beat Calamite to say to him as he dies, You're a knight be very funny, but I will not remember it. Incidentally, I'm not sure I ever mentioned this, but if you attack an enemy within a very, very specific window of them performing an attack animation, uh, you actually get like a mini crit. Um, I think it has a specific term. It's similar to the like long animation reposts you get when you break someone's poise. Um, except it has no special animation, you just get bonus damage. Which is why those dogs died very quickly, because I was using the unique ability of a thrusting weapon. A well, the class of thrusting weapons has this unique ability where um, they can attack with a light attack while your shield is up. Spears can do this, and, and thrusting swords like my rapier can do it. So his attack hit on my shield, and my attack hit him on the face. One of the reasons we don't want to be behind him is because he has a really, really, really high um, like AI priority for cast for, for doing that spin, uh, spinning tail attack if you're behind him, and it's really difficult to dodge. That would have been a good time to dodge.
don't know if you noticed this, but one of the previous times he blew fire, um, I got very, very lucky and it, my shield blocked the first hit and in the window of blocking the first hit of the fire, my dodge happened, the, que the queued input happened, which is very unusual and not really supposed to happen, which is how I managed to dodge out of the fire. use that to heal. It's me, I'm dead. That's a waste. Two more of those would kill him. The question is whether I can get them in. That's it! Haha! <sighs> Fear my mighty soul spears. So, execution perfect, I think you'll find. I didn't screw up at all. Wink. <laughs> Can't believe I did that on my first try. Double wink. So there you have it. Ostensibly the toughest boss in the first Dark Souls. He was intended to be the toughest. He was, the, he was designed to be the toughest. I believe it was explicitly stated by the, the game's director that he was supposed to be a real, like, the real challenge for the hardcore players. Um, but as I've said, that is debatable. And it will come down now to two more bosses. We have the final boss of the DLC area here. Thank you all for your praise. I, I thrive on praise, which is one of the reasons I'm so desperate to grow my channel. I want more people to tell me I'm good at things. But um, yeah, so after this, it's Manus at the end of the, uh, the Ulusil area. And then it will be off to Anor, or, no, off to fight the king of Anor Londo, but not in Anor Londo with the final boss of the game, way back beneath Firelink Shrine. I think I'm going to call it a night now. Uh, do you know, saying that has reminded me about my joke about calling calling Calamite a night, which I, I fucking called it. I did forget to say that. So, uh, let's spend our souls, tidy up our inventory perhaps. Then I'm going to head off to zone out and see if I can sleep or if I'm going to have 
another fully insomniac night, which I would not like to happen, but you never know. I think these attunements are fine. Do I have items I don't want to be carrying around? I do. I don't want my red sign soapstone, cracked red eye orbs, I don't want blue eye orbs. I don't want the dragon eye or the dragon headstone or this eye of death. I don't even know why I have that. The rest of these are worth hanging on to. I don't need these again, ever. I did have prism stones in here. Why did I put those in my box? I should have just kept them around. They're useful. Any souls? Some rubbish, which does not have no value. I suppose we should probably go visit Snugly the Crow before we finish up the game. Golden coin, I'll hang on to that too. And that is going to be it for today, I think. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much to my Patreons for being my Patreon Patreon patrons. Are, they, are, are the people who donate to you on Patreon your Patreons or your patrons or your Patreon patrons? Um, okay, someone wants to be summoned in. We're not going to summon them in, but that's definitely a that's definitely a look. Anyway, uh, yes, thank you so much for watching. Um, almost certainly all of you know about this, but yeah, blah blah blah, YouTube, check out links in my channel description, blah blah blah. Uh, thank you so much for which watching and for seeing me beat a tough boss, I guess. I will catch you later.